recorded live, and it's on uh, Verizon 33, Comcast 22, and you can uh, see times at www.rctv.org. And the first item on the agenda is a notice of intent 270-07001, 285 Main Street, Map 12, Lot 43, uh, Taj Engineering, LLC. And um, yep, so you're up. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you want to talk about? All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I'm John Casey. I'm here on behalf of Todd Engineering and Perfectos Cafe. This is Max, owner of the cafe. He's here to uh, present his argument today. And here I have the latest plan. Should I hang it up over here, or should I just hold it in the middle? Is it the best if you, if you hang up there, is, yeah. Is it different than what we have here? Yes, yeah, so that's the existing conditions plan. This is the latest revised site plan with and a nine. list of species and revised planting area. So any of these in right here? Oh, we didn't get this as a No, no, you okay. don't have the soft copy, unfortunately. So we'll just soften it down. You can put it right there where the eraser is so they can focus in on it. There we go. All right, so the main areas of concern last time were what species were going to be planted in this area. So we provided a list, including the arrowwood, pepperbush, dogwood, alder, which are all drought resistant bushes. And then we have, uh, we removed the guardrail. And I wanna let Max explain why that, that is the right decision here. So. Um, before you do that, Carol, can you take a look at the plan? Yeah, sure. I want to take a look at it too. Sure. So while we're on that subject. So this is the same plan last time. Yeah, we had suggested that. I thought it was a great suggestion. Yeah, we, we did revise yeah. the planting area as well. See that. Yeah. The other commission members have to take a look. That's labeled snow storage area, which is what we what we do currently right now. And um, I know that there's been some talk about the 25 foot zone natural vegetation and the 32 foot zone natural vegetation as well. And when you look at the lot that we had to work with, and when you look at where the, we have some existing parking here that, that basically runs through the 25 foot and the 35 foot. The 25 and the 35 is basically in the middle of the building. Uh, it's through the dumpster area. And uh, you know, there's basically a little section here that, that's available. And it's really what we need to put our snow. We need to have that space there to put our snow, okay? 
And um, if there's a guardrail there, or if there's a granite curbing there, what's going to happen is uh, the snow's going to be, we're not going to be able to put the snow there. We can't get a bobcat in there. It's going to be too expensive for us to do that. We want to get somebody to come in and just, you know, plow everything and push everything to the back where it's supposed to go. And um, we need to, you know, open. Uh, same thing with this part. Yeah, I think there was something that's adjusted to the back here too. But what would happen there uh, would actually remove some of the parking that we have made for us. Um, so we want to be able to push all that snow in that area. Um, and that's, that's how we'd like to see it get done. Are you proposing to take out all of the guardrail on those three spaces to the right? Correct. Correct. And the reason for that is so that the, it's, it's the plow can push it? Exactly. So the plow's coming at it from two sides. This side, uh, the right of the dumpster and to the left of the dumpster. Exactly. Are any of the employees currently parking um, in the snow storage area? Yes, occasionally they are. And the reason for that is? Occasionally, uh, the reason for that is that we are kind of tight on space. Luckily, business has been pretty good, and uh, we were parking on the side street. We got some complaints from the neighbors, uh, so we're trying to service as many customers as possible, not up to the neighbors, and occasionally we do park a car in the snow storage area. It has happened. It's so, what, so, so what's to prevent um, during snow events, or you know, during the winter time before snow is accumulated, what's to prevent that from continuing? It's a good question. I think what's going to happen is, first of all, when there's snow there, I'm probably going to wind up losing all, all of those parking spaces because that's where the snow goes. Did you well, lose those spaces this year? Definitely. Okay. Sorry, Nika, go ahead. No, it was, um, it, um, so, you know, in order to um, originally um, permit this um, for the original construction, there was probably a variance that was needed for the one, two, three, uh, four parking spaces between the property and Main Street. I can I can help you with that. Is that um, true? No. Uh, it's because it was and existing. I explained this to Grandfather. Homes, but um, this area here where we have parking, right. existing pavement, existing previously disturbed area, okay. along with the um, mm -hmm. the building, which was built on the existing foundation from the tuxedo shop. Okay. So this area back here was the only thing that was left naturally vegetated or grass and shrubs. So this was the area that was supposed to be protected. That's why okay. it was it was deemed okay, okay. you know, to redevelop so, that, that front area. Okay, so to recap from that original permit, I mean, um, truly the, um, you know, the three parking spaces are kind of a taking compared to the original permit that you know those that the space under that those three additional parking spaces is taking up right now was reserved f for natural vegetation according to the original permit yeah. so um, I think you know we, I, I I understand your need for additional parking and I know it's a challenging location and I know you've yeah, had one heck of a hard time getting in there and opening yes. and you know and I've got I've got a lot of um, you know and I'm not um, unsympathetic to all that you've had to go through to, to get where you are now um, but to put on my conservation hat which I have to do when I'm sitting here um, I, I need to see that those three parking spaces are not, are the absolute limit of what is going to be parked on. 
I cannot accept that there is going to be additional parking in that snow storage area. I cannot accept, and I've heard repeatedly from our administrator and from other people who have driven by on this con on this commission, that even after repeated notices to either yourself or uh, somebody there, that parking has continued in that snow storage area, even though we've asked that the parking in that area where there's it's, needs it's, to be vegetation. True. That's true, we have, we have parked there. And park. so what I'm saying to you is how, you know, for, for me, that guardrail is the physical guarantee that there is no longer going to be parking in that snow storage area. Because that's what I need to see happen. Well, I can understand, I can for understand this. why you need to see that happen, but I, I, I personally don't think that it's logical I don't think it's logical based on what's happened over the years with this space. Um, well, on what ground? On is it not? On, is on, it not well, logical? Well, why it's not logical is that when you look at the when you look at the plot that we that we had to work with, and where the the 25 foot and the 35 foot ah, the building is on top of it, the dumpsters on top of yep. it. The, you know, we're talking basically. I don't have my I don't have my measurements here. But there's probably like five feet of space that we're talking about that's preventing us from parking because of this imaginary 35 foot zone. Well, it's not imaginary, but it's. Well, you know, I'm, it, I'm, I, I know, like, I know my business, I don't know your business. So when I say it's imaginary, it's, it's, that's what, that's what it seems like to me. There's, there's. It's a setback it, in the by, in the town regulations. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for it's a that setback. Up thank you it's for that up written into the town regulations. So, I, you know, I, for I, wetland I think protection. Right. But so. what I'm saying is, is that the whole building, the dumpster, everything is on that 35 foot setback. Because, as Mr. Taroni had discussed, it had been grandfathered in as previously I, I developed. So, I agree. you know, and at I some point, say, we understand that we can't, we're, we're not going to go back to you and say, um, dig up the entire building and move it all out of the 35 foot because it's the building and the foundation and all that was, we accepted as grandfathered as a pre existing condition. You understand? So, but the difference about these three spaces is it's additional, above and beyond the grandfathered space. And so, you know, and as a space that's set up for, um, for vegetative growth and habit, which provides a layer of habitat protection, um, which is what we're here for, um, I, I don't have much of a problem allowing the three spaces, but I cannot, I need to see some level of guarantee that that is as far as the parking goes. And I don't know how you want to show that or how you want no, I'm to. Not, I'm not really sure how we could show that. Well, if you can't promise it, then. Well, I, I, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm not okay. going to look you in the Fine. face and say, I can't put a guardrail there because of the snow, but I'm never going to park there and then have one of my employees after being told 12 times not to park to the left of the dumpster and they still park there. I'm, I'm not going to lie and say it's never going to happen again. But you understand her point though. I that do. That's why we I, want a I physical do. barrier. I, I can't have a physical barrier there. It's, it, it, would, it would be, it doesn't make any sense at all. Is there any, any kind of portable barrier like some kind you know, of a bollard and some something that would go across you know, I, I can't I, I thought about I thought about that because I think I spoke to Chuck about it a little bit you know and he, he was saying something about a temporary temporary thing and I thought maybe like those horses that they have you know they're made out of like uh, vinyl or something yeah, and, you, know, yep. uh, you know maybe we could put something like that up um, because you know that that potentially could work you know um, for, for, for all things considered. Uh, I have to agree with Anika and Mike that I think we've been 
we're allowing you three additional parking spaces in area of our jurisdiction. And we cut back on the full part of that snow removal, the snow um, storage area, because that did, that does, and it's like a, you know, like a horseshoe, and it does make a lot of sense. And what I like about that, it provides a natural barrier between, you know, your physical, um, business and and the stream out back I really I really do like that design but I, I'm a little leery about not having some kind of barrier uh, or some kind of some kind of barrier that does and I don't know uh, I are you on premises all the time I mean you need to come was, down on your I was, employees. I wasn't there for a good amount of the day today. I was at a, uh, another location. Actually, I only saw one car in the three when I went by around And, and that, I think, is, is what's happening occasionally. You know, sometimes there won't be any cars there. And then sometimes, even though we've told everyone, someone parks at the left. Your, your, your patrons don't park there, do they? Occasionally they have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, occasionally they have, and uh, it's only like, I, you know, I'm gonna say, let, let me let me clear that up. Actually, it might have happened twice in the last six months that we've been open that customers are. That's not too bad. What if there was a um? It's just a, an idea, but what if there was a sign posted, a parking sign posted at the end of each of these two rows of parking spaces that literally said employee parking only. Go up there and there? Right. Yeah. And yeah. no yeah. further. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Employee parking only. Yeah, an employee parking sign here. That, that, that actually makes sense. And an employee parking the only. only problem, the only problem that I have with that one, again, is probably the plow again. But there should be enough space between those two signs. If there is, then, then we should do that. I mean, you know, plowmen can be brutal, um, brutal or can be skillful. <laughs> so, 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 you know, my, I... My mailbox in North Andover wound up in my neighbor's front portico last year yeah i i know yeah but that's probably a big you I'm know sure plow is, it, 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 you're, you're talking about a pickup truck with a, a plow in front that, that's what we that's what you've hired so there are things hired. like removable bollards yeah. mm. can i offer a suggestion that uh, would actually serve both purposes here oh, you could actually still put a guard reel there that was made out of pipe and that were in plastic sleeves in the ground. And then when you want it to plow, you pull the plastic sleeves out of the ground, plow, and then they go back in the plastic sleeves. And that would, that would re retain that barrier from, because I have to be honest with you, I've gone by before and there's been four cars to the right of the dumpster and one car to the left of the yeah, dumpster. Yeah. And the parking lot has not been full, so it's not customers that are parking there. So, you know, I think one of the things you have to understand is that the commission is asking for some assurance that even though, you know, you could say that people aren't going to park there, but unless you have the parking police out there all the time, someone might park there. If, there's, if there is a, a physical barrier there, other than when you removed it to actually uh, plow the snow and then put it back again, that barrier would remain. You know, I can understand what you're saying. That actually, you know, I, I, I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm arguing with you folks about this, but it, you know, I, I know what it's going to be like to have a removable mm. product in the winter time when there's four feet of snow on the ground and it's ten below yeah. and it's dark and. It's it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You have to understand that we understand what it's going to be like when there's no nothing there to stop people from changing that one spot into two spots and from parking next to the, yeah, the dumpster know, and like and they I, have been. You know what? And I, I, I hear what you guys need. And you know she had suggested a uh, you know park a uh, an employee parking sign. I think that that might make sense. But. It, my understanding that it, this is the employees that are parking there. Definitely. 
it's not going to make sense in, after the first winter. I mean, I think that is not enough. I, I don't think so it would work what about long term. A, what about a uh, removable horse? You know, like those rubber horses that they have on the highways, or you know, when you're when you're digging up holes. Another suggestion could just be could be granite, so it's aesthetically pleasing, or or bollard. Well, in the ground to the left of the concrete pad. What happens with that is the plow can't, can't push the snow. So then there's a chain going across, which happens in, I would say, most sort of development areas. Hook the chain up, very simple. If you can get, I don't know what the scale is, if you can get 10 feet through there, plow will fit. Push it through, chain back up. Yeah. I think that's well, pretty that simple in my head. Well, and, and let me just say that, you know, the more that area is protected, okay, the more the investment of your plantings mm -hmm. is guaranteed. You know, you, you get people parking there, those plants are not going to thrive. You're going to get people driving over the area that you paid to plant. You know, and so think about that, you know, in terms of, I don't know, some sort of in-house rules or some sort of understanding. Um, we're, about the parking situation. You know, I think too. the uh, applicant has, has uh, said to the commission that you just you just can't go after your employees all the time. So that's that's and not going to happen at this place. They're going to park there, and it's not worth the fight to not have them park there. So I don't know what you guys are going to do, but I know a sign's not going to help me out with what I need to do. You know. It, 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 there's got to be something that works. I, I don't know what it is, but um, I, I would ask this. Did you ever look at what it costs to get someone there with a bobcat? Did you, did you go through that exercise? I didn't, but I So know. is it just someone you know who's plowing, or did you hire someone? No, we hired someone. And I, I also have some other real estate right. buildings. No, I'm sure I, you, you know. uh, The reason I'm only bringing it up only because I, I kind of have an idea of what stuff is going to cost. Mm -hmm. The price is going to be triple, quadruple. You know, it's a specialized person that comes in. They're going to put it on a flatbed. It's not like they drive the Bobcat, you know, down the road like they do with a plow truck, you know. Do we have a, a sense as to what the dimension is between the left side of the dumpster and the corner of the building? If I was going to guess it, you know, I'd say like maybe 10 feet. Oh, as, as he suggested, I mean, if you put if you put a uh, you know, cement filled pipe and you put uh, double chains across there, um, those could actually be removed when you plow the snow, and you leave the pipes in the ground and then push between the two pipes. pipes. Could we could we put a uh, like an eye bolt on the building and on the uh, yeah one could be eye bolt on granite uh, on yeah. a couple granite bounds yeah. or something? I, I no, no, not on the. No. That's expensive. <laughs> Or concrete you know, mount. I mean, if you want concrete, some mount. sort of. Yeah. Could we just could we just chain it from the building to, to the, the dumpster to the dumpster area instead of having you know grip? That's that's crazy. I would think to the building would work, but to ensure that it wouldn't just be left deserted, I think the, to the right of that con to the left of the concrete pad, could there be some bollard stationary? There, there, there is a, there is on the, there's uh, a fence, on right? the, yeah, There is a fence, so we could connect to that, would, to that pipe. I think that, that would just destroy the fence. If that was I think you also want to leave that a, a walking walk area yeah. because if you put as well to get around the corner of your building, vinyl. Yeah, no, you don't want to have to take that chain down vinyl. every time plus, that's not, you go that's around the corner of your cemented. building. That's, he can, he so can, if you had a, a, like what I'm saying is you've seen the, the metal pipes that they put the plastic sleeves over, you get them in color, and that's what I was just advancing, the cement filled metal pipes with a plastic sleeve or painted if you want, but that's, that's you know, that would be up to you, but you could actually put that around all of those areas that would give us an assurance that that place to the left wouldn't be parked in and then the other one would be limited to the three the other thing that also is a consideration to the two parking spaces on the right is that um, that we really don't want the snow to be pushed out the end of those two parking spaces because that's going to go into the brook is the brook right there behind that? It's 25 feet away from that. Yeah, I mean, that's where the 35 foot is coming off the page. Right. So, so it goes around that, that way. Okay. Mm. So, I mean, that would be another another consideration. But 
Um, so removable, I agree, removable bollards are used yeah. a lot in many public spaces. Right. Even tennis courts have them. You put them over, play tennis. They're, they're so common now because it's a health and safety issue for yeah. a lot of rent. You know, they, they don't want people driving down walkways or uh, sidewalks or at oh, yeah. like tennis. But if there's an emergency, they yeah. want an ambulance to be able to right. pull up and, and get there. It's a really common option. And, and so I think we, at least what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of options that would really take away from having a, a permanent closure for the, that would cause an issue for the plow yeah, and it, still serve as a physical barrier I that would the chain the chain actually makes the most amount of sense to me um, you know and as far as connecting the chain so that we can remove it when the plow guy comes I, I don't want to I don't want to invest any more money in granite I don't, I don't I mean, I think well, it'll, that was not. That was just a suggestion. Yeah, I, know, I think it'll look yeah. nice and everything, but it's it's kind of an overkill to hold up a piece of chain. And I think we can put the chain up, uh, you know, connect it to the building, connect it to the dumpster pipe, uh, and maybe if we have to put, I don't know how we would connect it back here, but maybe we could use the dumpster enclosure part, and maybe we could put like one bollard or something. Is that what you calling it? Bollard. Bollard. And or, that's what we're connecting. Piece of pipe. The, uh, pipe. A piece of pipe. Yeah. I like that better, uh, and then we can connect a, a chain, chain there. I would suggest. So, in line with what we were, we were talking about, I would suggest that you think about where they they're going and what they're connecting to. Is you know, if you connect to the building and you don't have a way to, to get around there, are people going to start taking it down and leaving it down just because mm -hmm. they're walking behind there or they're trying to get to the uh, one of the areas of the dumpster well, if we, or if we, if we, if we, I mean, we're talking about us want two extra posts here just to, to sure. keep it separate but and I, create I that also area. think what's going to happen too is if we put two more posts, you know, if we have ten feet, that space might come get down to like nine feet. You know, yeah. and now you you can only get an eight foot plow in there, you know, and, and you only have like six inches on each side. That that's why I'm hesitant about putting any type of pipes in this area. You know, I can see putting a pipe here because there would be no way of connecting the other, um, you know, the other end of the chain. So I mean, even as Dave suggested, there's ways to make these pipes removable as well. I mean, yeah. it, this isn't this isn't. The other thing is, I, I, you're probably right, but I'm, I'm thinking when it's frozen out. I, I don't know if that's going to work well. They do, they do come up. What you do is the, 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 pipe, the pipe is steel, the sleeve is plastic. I see. It doesn't really matter if it's 10 degrees outside, they come right out. And I think if there's a, you know, a forecast at Nor'easter coming, it's something preventable, then you can remove the ball in anticipation of the storm, right? I mean, a lot of these, a lot of these types of devices are designed for roads New, New England. and New England weather. So, you know, it'd be, you know, you could check with Mass DOT and see what their standards are. I mean, you know, we don't want to engineer this for you yeah. because then, but we want to hear your proposed. I, th I think, I think we're kind of like on common ground. I, I think I'm agreeing with the chain. Uh, and I think that makes sense, and I can appreciate how you thinking that when we're trying to get behind the building, that you know it's it's not going to be that easy. But I, I also think that you know if there's a chain there, you can either walk underneath it or above it, and uh, you just, we just don't want cars to go back there. You know, so I think if we put an eye bolt to the building and we connect to the dumpster. Should be what kind of chain? So, I, I'm very skeptical of that plan, but I know that how simple it is and how inexpensive it is, um, and I know that's appealing. But I don't know if that satisfies all the people that are going to park there. As a matter of fact, even the removable bollard, I think yep. that someone might just, in a mad dash to get to work, just rip that thing out and throw it in the pond or something like that or in the stream because they know they're removable because the parking lot's full. Well, no, I mean, I, that would actually be pretty funny if they threw that. Oh, I'd laugh. I'd laugh. <laughs> So loud. You know, you know you can get think the thing <laughs> that is, would be is that funny. We're talking about removable ones here. You only have to utilize two removable bollards for this, if you wanted to use removable bollards at all. I think I think I'm on board with the chain. You know, I but that's just, what that's what the chain would attach to is these no, bollards. Right, right. But I, I think I, I can I can see I can see. How do you see two? I can see this. I see three, three minimum. One at the end of each pocket. Well, one in well, front of the, the... The two to the left of the dumpster can be permanent. 
And then one here, and right? One there and that. And then and one here. Corner, and one to the left from where you are there. Because the two that are up there, there, those can be permanent. Yeah. Take right. that in. Up at oh, three, they can be three, permanent? Those can be permanent. And then in the inside corner, down, down to the left from where you are there. Um, so it, it, right, right there. there. Th those two right there would be ones that would you, you'd want to be able to take out to be able to swing into the snow storage area. Right. This, we don't we don't need this shape. I mean I think if we if we did this I don't know what this line is, but if it's that's if the thirty five cent thirty five cent back. Well, the 35 35 set back. Okay, so and we, this is the dumpster here. So if we did something like like that well, I think that's one of the things that we don't want to see because I think that we're, what we're going to find is that you, you're trying to you, we, more parking space, right? You, a would, you, would, spot. you would not be able to park a car there. But you, if we didn't have any barrier there, you could. That could no, be I'm saying with the, spots. With the not if there's a chain here. Notice that the parking spots that we proposed are eight feet wide. So if you bring the corner of the car, uh, this, 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 this could be a four foot wide spot. By 16 foot long? This is a 35 foot yeah. setback. So what's the standard line? But if you line? put the chain from here the standard is not to here, straight line, yeah. you can't park a car there. Yeah. It's eight feet wide right now. That would cut it down to six feet wide. So, so we, you know, we can't sit here and design your project. Um, I have another question, though. Um, What's to, what's to prevent your employees just taking the chain off? You know, it well, let, let's put it this way: you can put a padlock on the chain. Okay, no. that's what I want to hear. Now, if I may, what is the primary reason for having the bollards rather than just to, you know, attaching it to the building and the structure itself? Because I hear I hear a lot. You know, obviously Max wants to put it on the building, and you guys want the bollards, but I haven't really heard the main difference between There's the There's no real way, well, other than taking the chain down, to get in back of the building. Well, no, I think my concern was that, is that a vinyl fence? Is it yes. a vinyl fence it's, surrounding it's, the dumpster? I'm glad you asked. It's vinyl on three sides yep. and then metal in the front. So where would the, my only concern is that I agree that the house could work with the eye bolt to sure. a, to so a structure. So there's a chain link post on that front left corner of okay. the dumpster enclosure? So yeah. That you could that was all my concern. Is I, w I wouldn't attach it to a piece of vinyl. Yeah, well, obviously that's 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 a big Okay. And a gate. Oh, I see. I just saw yeah. that. No, yeah. well, and I think the other part of the bollard, when you're looking um, behind the stock, the concrete stockade, the um, dumpster area, um, you know, you're talking about what, 16, 20 feet of chain from from what? From the concrete pad edge of vinyl fence to what? Are you, are you saying this, this measurement? Yeah. 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 Like, how's that going to be spanned without some sort of post in the middle to manage the weight, the, the enormous chain. weight of chain or and the two force can, it's going to... It's going to lay that just yeah. sta staying and on the ground. That just a dead lake sitting in the middle it wouldn't have to be in the ground. I don't know what a dead lake looks like. A dead lake is just, it's, just it's a, a, it's a post pipe. that just doesn't go on the ground. It just stands there. Oh. So it just like, like holds, holds it up? Yes, it just yep. holds it up. Okay. Yeah. I guess, the, so, uh, to get back to the building piece That again, sounds you know, temporary. It's just attached to the chain. Mm. It stays attached to the chain. Oh, right. So saying. when you pull the two pieces of chain, across or one piece of chain, it just stands up just to hold that sag in the middle, that's all. It'd be better, it would be better to have if that yeah. was the right one to do. Well, um, so... One of the other questions I have, do you, where do you take the trash out of your building? Do you take it out of the back side or the side facing the parking lot? Okay. Um, I believe this is where it opens. Oh, okay. No, no. No, we would just leave you taking the trash out of the building. Oh, okay. So, I don't know what the building is here. So, that's the building over here. Oh, okay. This is the back. This is the right. So, there's two doors here. Yep. Is that a ring? And we come out the side door right there. Okay. And we put it right Is there a door out the back of the building? I don't know where we would here. Yeah. No. No, there is not. Okay. So, just again, I want to make sure you're. Uh, an eyeball coming from the corner of this building to this point is going to go right here. You're essentially going to be blocking. Uh, you know, I know this is this is already a really skinny spot, really good area to get out of. I just I want to make sure 
you know, I'm, I'm not even in love with the idea, and I, I feel like it's it would just be so much easier. To put that, it one sounds like post. it's a conservation right. commission idea, not an engineering idea. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We need. We need. I, and I'm glad you guys did such a great job designing this, but <laughs> you know, we should be reviewing something, not designing. Exactly. It. So. I, again, you it, know this what could we work, want, but show us something. Yeah, I, I, I think you've got an idea of what our concerns are. That we, we yeah. want a physical barrier. We, we want to see that there's a physical barrier that's going to stop hey, people from parking in that back area, and be that maintains the form of those three spots. That that's a, a, a big concern of it. Sounds like everybody that's here. So uh, that's what we're looking for here. So. Uh, if it's not a, a guardrail that was proposed earlier, you know, something in line with what we've been talking about tonight. But so, I, mean, I, I know I know I had, I had uh, mentioned it, but the vinyl horses, uh, would that work? We need a plan. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. I just, you so we, we need, we need I, a I, schematic, I think, I think you know what I mean? Yeah, we, we need to pick up the right? Do that. Like, well, you, it's, I think it's, I don't want to uh, back those, here anymore. Those are going like, to disappear within a, a month. Yeah. Yeah. We could agree. Right? Next building that was project I do, you know. <laughs> put it on the pipe for the chain. Yeah. A pipe instead of a bomb for the chain would be okay. Yeah, like a, a post, a, a regular old fence. I, I think that's yeah. the best balance between yep. the semi uh, permanent barrier. A yeah. fence post? Like yeah. a, a metal fence post? It, as long as it doesn't I mean, get in the way of the plow. Yeah, you know, right. You, you might you have know, something a little bit less permanent between those three spaces. Does that something more permanent? That's up to you guys to figure out exactly what that spacing right, is right. and exactly where those locations are because. Yeah. You know, yes. it's not I mean, our purview said, yeah. to make that decision for you. Yeah. So another thing to think about is, I know Dave, you said before it snows or when it snows, take it off. But this could be a structure that's established through the spring and fall, and you can remove it the second week in November until the snow goes away. So that that would uh, right. yeah. So if, if snow storage is there, if there's a big snow pile there, I don't have an issue with it not going back up. <laughs> is that what you're saying? You no, I, I don't storage. need it to snow. I I need it to be part of their like operation maintenance plan. Like in November, they'll remove the the guardrail, and then that'll be open for storage from there forward. And if if someone parks there, well, that's just going to be four months. But that's about as much a control and have the snow storage in that area. Area as we could do so maybe you could think about something like that uh, that's why I like those bollards because you just take them out in November and put it back in in June Chuck, I'm, I'm not sure if, if anybody answered the uh, the horse the, the vinyl horse those are not substantial enough. I, I don't I think, think I, you know, they would be too easy to they're very remove. they're very light uh, they it's it the bollard is an impressive structure. Only you and some of your employees would know it's not solid and it would be removable. So that that would be really good. And that would probably last. That investment in you know time and money to put that in would last a long time because you put it in a cement base, pop that in, we flush with the ground. You can see that it has a cover on the top of it. I didn't see what those things cost, but again, you're only gonna replace the bollard if someone runs into it and maybe no, that's maybe that's you know, something steel. else could be. These are so so we don't have to actually have a, uh, a padlock yeah. on them. Too. You do something we could create. create. Oh, oh I can see that. Look at the padlock area. Yeah. So yeah. You yeah. Would yeah. A uh, fence post up there would be basically the same yeah. shape. But how could you yeah. take it out? In the, in the in November, that's that's what we're saying. We want it removable. We understand that you need it for snow storage, but you have to understand that we need some uh, assurance that no one will park there for eight months of the year. I mean, we basically want to train your clientele and employees not to be in that area, only the snow. And the other thing is, all you'd need is two of those removable bulbs. The other ones can be permanent. Right. On other points. Yeah. The and the bulbs aren't that expensive. They're like 70, if you do them yourself, they're like, like 75 bucks yeah. for, the, for the, and then you just fill them six feet, 75 bucks, six inch ball or, um, 75 for the well, you gotta get you gotta get them at a metal place. You know, so you'd be For the ball itself, or yeah. Oh. 
The removable ones? Yeah. No, I don't know what those cost, but I know what a piece of, what is it? I mean, yeah. you know what the size yeah. of steel yeah. is? I don't well, know I, have, is. I have an estimate yeah, right now. It's like gosh. a huge gauge. I think it has an estimate of a steel bollard. I have an estimate of a steel bollard. Um, What's the size? 36 inch, four and a third diameter. A steel, one steel bollard is 267. Yeah, and that's steel. I mean, if right. we had something concrete, that doesn't seem to be what I. But that's also I, for the finished steel ball. If you actually can right. make this out of fence pipe, and fence pipe is much less expensive. Right. So, but it's not substantial. So on those permanent ones, you want it back twenty year lifespan. Yeah. Piece of three inch schedule eighty PVC is very substantial. PVC. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, a right. galvanized fence pipe. And yeah, paint an orange, paint yeah. yellow. One and for these. You hit that with a car or a truck, and you're going to rattle your teeth. And for these steel bollards, you know, the yeah. more you buy, the cheaper it gets. Right. So for two, it's 231, and for three, it's 217 each. So there's three, $217 for three of them. No, at 217 17 each. each times three. Times three. So instead of one for 270. It's got three, it? four. Well, that's not my experience. But I mean, those, those, yeah, that's not my experience. <laughs> I mean, that's just but, one um, I just found quickly online. You got to search, and I think you know. that that might be something you need to look in. I, this might be as much help as we can possibly I, I give agree tonight. Yeah. Do, you, do you do you have an understanding of what we're asking for? Uh, yeah. Or can, do you do you mind? Putting it into your own words. Just yes, we, we're going to figure out a way of uh, installing a chain link fence uh, between the building and the dumpster and behind the dumpster. So there's only three cars in the park. And no so, cars to the left of the dumpster. Oh, I thought I said that. So there would, there would be a piece of chain here, so mm -hmm. you can't park there. And then there would be a chain from here to there. Yeah. So you can't buy. I, I, I think we need to, just to get a sense, are we all okay if it's just a single length of chain going from the corner of the dumpster yeah. to the back corner? I would think it just would just no. be something plastic. You, one you one chain, one chain going that 16 to 20 right. feet. What's your concern? Any well, that, I just, it, that it would sag? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a struck. I, I don't have a lot of experience with this, but that it would sag or that it. No, I think I think Dave and, and Carl answered that there are these things that, that okay. can I, hold it up. But the thing is, is that like I said, it's you could put two permanent pipes at the end of the two parking spaces, and then put two removable bollards at the head of that single space. Use the corner of your dumpster on that one end and the other corner of the dumps at the other end and then put a single pipe behind the building. So you have, you would have, using that, you would have three permanent pipes in the ground and two take out the pipes. Dave, do you mind, can you walk me through that? Yeah, can you draw I can draw that? Draw it. I'm not <laughs> And I think the commission needs to give some clear direction. Yeah. So let's decide. Oh, I just, I just wanted to give him an idea as to, so when he leaves, if he decides that this is what's going to be done. So if you use the corner of this, I'm assuming just because of the way the fence is, this is either a piece of three inch galvanized pipe or a four inch pipe. So if you go from here, and you can actually go past this, you can go, you know, you said you want to connect to the, the, the corner of the building, but I, I just advanced you. You're not going to hit the, the corner of the building here if you put one here. So now you have a piece of chain that goes between here. You can use the back corner of the, the fence here. Oh, actually, if you're going to, if we're going to install a ball here. Okay. So this is going to attach to the, the fence around your dumpster. There's one ball right here that's, that's permanent. We have another chain that's going to attach to the back of the, the, the fence from the dumpster pad here. This one here is a removable. This one here is a removable. This one is permanent. This one is permanent. So you have a chain in between you know, all of these here. This is what I was trying to say earlier, Dave. I was wondering, you know, if we have this, we remove this. That's, that's the question I just asked, and, and people said no. Well, I'm not sure why, because if, can I just draw this for a sure. second? 
if you if this was a chain link a chain uh, piece of chain, you can't you can't park here. I you, can, you could drive over. What is the purpose of talking about one bollard and six more feet of chain? It doesn't make because any sense to argue about that. It, it's I'm, I'm not trying to come off argumentative. I'm trying to do this as inexpensively as possible. I, I don't I don't want. 13 ballers and chain everywhere. I don't want it. We don't want cars everywhere. I agree. So the happy medium is, again, what we told me out here when I told you on the phone. This is a perfectly acceptable situation. You just need to isolate those that, those cars and a sign won't work Dave. and Dave. You know, we sauces that won't work. We took that off. And the, and the chain, like Dave this drew it, seems yes. to be this is the best. attached to the, the fence. The fence right. Right here. And then Maybe not the best, this but one, the compromise. The best compromise? The best, the best, the best, best compromise. That's removable. That's removable. Those are permanent. Sorry. Still ready to so take. So you've only got one, two, <laughs> three. Three permanent, three permanent <laughs> one removable. Two. Chuck? Which one? This one. Right here. Chuck. Chuck. So that the you now have, you have, a, one you have a chain that now is following the it's path. Very expensive the three packet spots. This is another one. Wait, so this is a cost of rent. Three packet spots. So we, so this is a half a day job. Yeah. So what, what I would advance to you here is that, and, and this is, to go from here to here, but I still would request that you put the removable one Dave, there. Dave, do you mind I, just talking to everybody? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to design it. Yeah, for right. I, I want, I want. But I think we need clear direction. I think, I think it's I think clear that we need to give clear direction. The, 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 the direction I could give chain. is. Do you want to say permanent? Closer to saying we'll, 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 this is what we need. Well, all right, so I understand. Yeah. And with locks on it. I'm glad you guys aren't designing it. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. Well, but here's what I'm going to say. Take offense to that. <laughs> no. I'm going to talk to Hulushi. And there's going to be a chain so you can't park the fourth car there. Okay? If you think, if you can give us some assurance that that action is going to stop the parking outside of those three approved, if we approve those three spots outside of those three approved areas, um, you know, so then give the us this and the ground plan. disturbance and all that. I mean, oh, I know. you're isolating the area, so we're not isolating that, isolating that area. And we're talking about six feet of chain and another ball. So two hundred and. To, you know, this it's is not even about the price. Yeah, I, I think whatever. You, you want to shape out that lot. I, 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 I mean, that's the guys again important to me. Too too much too much into it. Yeah. And let them present something, and it's it's a it's pretty <laughs> fair. It's a solution. It's pretty fair for three parking spots to ask for this, in my opinion. And it was asked from right from the beginning. And I think the um, we had we had something. Oops, so we have it right here. We had some. This was more substantial, and it would cost a lot more money than mm -hmm. what we just oh, yeah. what we mm -hmm. just came down to. Yeah. So it, it's it's a it's a good solution. It actually. I mean, I don't know what it's going to cost. That's what you have to find out. But it does have that ability to be removed. Yeah, I think. Uh, was it you yeah. out of the chain? I don't remember. Uh, I don't, was one, uh, whoever it was, that's a good idea. That'll, that'll work. All right. I'll so give you credit for it. Okay. Sounds good. This, the, the chain yes, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the ball woods of the pipe is much less expensive than this. Yeah. Okay, I have another question. You mentioned that a fence pipe would be sturdy enough to replace a ball -wood. No. So you're not convinced. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm talking wait to a the permanent. No, I'm going to tell you right now. Stop asking us. Yes. You are the engineer. Mm -hmm. Design it so no one will take it down. Well, and he then said bring us back. No, he's not an engineer either. Right. And just come on. All right. I know what you want. Okay. Um, so what else can we talk about? We're done. I, I think that's it. Right. Can we get a? Um, can we get a copy on, on what you um, planting We're going to be using for the previous pavement at that area. I'm sorry. Was there? Did we get a? What we were need using for the uh, previous pavement then? Can we can we get a copy of what was proposed? On the board there, right? The, uh, the planting plan. So yep, the planting plan. So we need the, the latest detail. Latest plan. We we do but need. But you a might copy wait until you put the new details on it. And did you get a chance to 
answer any of the engineers' questions? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they, or as far as I know, they were answered. But so we'll have to check with the engineer because I remember he wanted some calculations and who she was giving us some pushback. So I don't know. I didn't see yeah. any. Now, can I say something? We had proposed a, proposed a four by four post and rail fence, right? Yeah. And you came in and said that wasn't enough. So how can you say when a member proposes that something would be sturdy enough that I'm the engineer and I need to design it? What he says is sturdy enough it doesn't matter. He he had said that a fence post could act as a permanent anchor for the chain, as opposed to a bollard, right? I think fence posts, cheaper than a bollard, will work as a permanent anchor. But then all my question was, are you in agreement that a fence post would be enough for a permanent anchor for the chain? I think, I think, I think, I think we're all thinking similar things. Like, you, you guys want it fixed. You don't want to design it. We don't want to come back ever again, even if we like, <laughs> like this place. I know. We don't want to see you guys we, anymore. We understand. Oh, come on. So if I, if I had to guarantee yeah, 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 I wasn't coming we're back, I'd over-design something. We're going to put up a couple of fence posts with some rubber stuff over it with chain link. With that, you can't park in those spaces where we're going to have the chain link and the post. Just remember, it needs to be removable but solid and permanent where it's installed permanently. So I've seen a lot of fence posts snap because they're hollow. I think Dave said fence posts, but then he said schedule something it's pipe. Yeah, I, mean, I guess, pipe. I guess so the, the, the permanent. Is that, they, did they, you mean schedule 80 pipe instead of the fence post? Schedule 80 galvanized pipe is like quarter inch wall. It's very, it's very. Are you guys uh, designing now? No. No. <laughs> no, but, but we're, we're going to come up with. We're correcting <laughs> no fence post. No. Schedule no eight, yeah. Schedule eighty, or whatever you're gonna, whatever okay. you're gonna design. That's why he threw it back to people. We can't let him design it. it. We'll let him design it. He's good at that. All right. Great. Thank you. That's all we wanted. Okay. So, so we should make sure that we have uh, plans before the meeting so that we don't have to to walk up for the, the next one. We can see where it is and yeah, yeah. We need uh, our we plans need to review the it before before, 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 the, before the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. It'll yeah. just be faster and. Before we'll be we go to Wayne, we want to answer his question about the single single length of chain versus the. Yes. No, we said no. Okay. I, I agree with Chuck. You, right. you brought up a good point that you know they can trample that and with the car and yeah, yeah I uh, I agree with it. We want the shape of that. Yeah. Great. Yep. I just want to make sure you have all your questions answered before you go away. So that next time is be, be able to get it done. Yeah, the next time we'll be able. You know, I feel like we were in understand we were understanding each other, but I think what you just said, I don't think we're understanding each other anymore. I think that I don't think there's a need to have the shape of three parking spaces. I think what we've heard is the commission does think there's a need. I I, I think is, there's a need. I think I the need, I, the need is is forward. the protection of the resource area and and yeah I don't I don't want that little there's there could be significant disturbance in there. If you don't want to put a chain up, chain up, you could put a bollard and put a bollard so it looks like you can't go forward. Perfect. But here's what I'm asking: if if you can't park a car there, why does it have to be the shape of a car? I think what the problem is that because that, that pie, yeah. my motorcycle could fit in that pie. So then I That's pull up front, point. and the employee behind me has this Honda Civic behind it. So technically, plus a chain will move, a chain will swing. If I have my old car, I can push the chain up another three feet and have the other guy park behind me. It's just assuring that no one can, that little pie is usable space. So, not, not to design again, but I think a simple solution is two bollards, 16 feet, that's enough of a space, you don't need anything in the middle. Put a bollard in front of that space, in the pie, so no one can move up in front of the space. You don't have to look at a chain, but it'll be behind the bollard. I think it would be more uh, visually pleasing with the chain that went all the way around. Oh, we probably don't want to go there. Okay, so Max, it's again, it's this is this is it's it's um, you want three parking spots. The uh, CPDC, when you talk to them, said we want either the guardrail or a curbing. So you don't need the curbing with this method, and you're you have. 
Um, some removable bollards, which you asked about, so you can do your plowing. You're going to be taking them out in November and installing them back in June. It seems like a great compromise, and I think that it's really about the best um, we can come up with tonight. And that's why I said just go back and kind of put it on a plan, and we'll close this out at the next meeting. And I, I think that. You know, it might not be best. We don't feel great. You might not feel great. But again, you're getting your three parking spots, and uh, and you're getting your snow storage too. Which is, I'm glad you brought that up because I wouldn't want to add that expense to what you're doing there. Thank you. All right. Can I ask right, another simple question? Did you ever approach Bank of America to see if you could snick some spots from them? No, I I never approached Bank of America, but I did approach both of my neighbors. Uh, crossing 128 or crossing 28 would be well yeah, right that across the street that, that uh the atm from for uh, bank of america it's a huge parking area around it this at the head of that which wouldn't impinge upon anyone yes, coming is. in or out of there you could certainly park three cars at the head of that parking lot i i agree this is a huge parking situation in town, anyways. It's, I, I it's would, very, very. I would, that's a treacherous road. Yeah. Dangerous to cross treacherous. Yeah. So it is. There's a there's a um, right around the corner from you. There's a vacant lot that is wooded. It's not that big, but it's not built on. I don't know who owns that. That's behind the chiropractor. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I know. Uh, we've tried to contact that guy a couple of times. I think he's in the North End or something like that. He has a return that call. Oh. Maybe you don't say, "Hey, look, I want to buy it." I, I want to buy it. Maybe you say, "Look, I want to pave it and use it." And you know, then whatever you do in the future is your, you know, because I have no rights to it other than whatever I'm doing right now, which is paving it and let my employees park there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could just put some gravel on it, but there, it's right around the corner. Yeah. It'd be great for employees because they don't have to cross that road. So, I think there's an understanding at this point. Yeah. I make a motion to continue. I second. second. All those in favor? I agree. All right. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you Thanks, Thanks Max. Thanks Thank for you. the treats. Thank you. Uh, All right, so. There's nothing else on the agenda. There's nothing oh, wait a else minute, on the agenda. But, but I need to. Uh, but you need to go through it. No, that's I know. Okay. I want to get through the rest of the agenda. 705 Notice of Intent 278-0705 1503 Main Street, Lot A, Map 60, Lot 11, Castellano, and the next one 270-0704. Same Main Street address, Lot B, uh, Castellano, uh, that's been continued. And 715, request for RDA uh, for Meadowbrook Golf Course, Golf Club, that also has been continued. Do we have an order of conditions for Salem Street? So it's, it's a city oh, place so now, and um, I'm still reviewing that. The gentleman is oh. removing uh, one invasive. Uh, each time I go out there, I identify one. He takes it out over the weekend, and I go back, and I found another one, and he removes that from the lot. And I think we're going to be ready at our next meeting to go out there, and look at the site. All the invasives will be gone, and we'll, we'll issue The invasives, is, is it the catalpa, the woody catalpa? This is uh, Manny... Uh, Manny, it was uh, the Melin Melinda. The one, the one Yon with the wall? Yon. Yep. Warchan. Yeah. Warchan. Warchan and Thank Yon you for doing that. Yeah, well. Sounds iterative. Yes. It's just down the street. So. And this polygonum, that's the Japanese knotweed. In Japanese there. knotweed. That's the first one we did. That was easy. Okay. What else are you... Catalpa, the woody, yeah, woody things we're gonna do towards the, the front. Catalpa next, and there's only there's not a, there's only a few of that, and uh, that I'll just see. I'm supposed to. I'm going to be out there on Tuesday. That removal was part of like the the mitigation because there was a very yeah. it's, yeah. I always have to monitor that area for invasives, and so he needs to understand what they are and what's yeah. coming in and right. pull them out before they become as tall as that catalpa was. So so this is actually kind of in field training for him on which invasives he needs to keep an eye on and yep. Are you leaving the pile of wort in there? The, yeah, because no one felt that, that was a problem. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I, I mean, I it might rip be. rip it out of my stuff, but I, yeah, I don't. That wasn't a, that was a native from what I found. I mean, yeah. he might not like it, 
but I'm not sure. Okay. Do you want the pile water removed? No, no not necessarily. Yeah, I, th I think that we're just going to stick to invasives. So that's the update on that. It's an ongoing process, but it will be here for the next meeting. We'll see it on the Monday prior to the meeting. Great. Okay. You want to introduce yourself? You're our liaison to I the board of selectmen. Andy, Andy Friedman uh, from, from the select board and uh, our liaison. And uh, I thought you guys did a really good job. Uh, very helpful and patient. Thanks. 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 We have to be. <laughs> All right, anything else on the agenda? I have a question. If you want to take one of the uh, MACC uh, training things that's a FIFA, do we have to get your approval first or do we just sign up, pay for it, and then get reimbursed? Well, if, you're, if you've been on the commission more than three years, um, then we will pay, we'll reimburse you. But if you haven't, um, on my own. you're on, yeah. Okay. Is that true? <laughs> or yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I've never heard that before. <laughs> and I've been on for a while. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, Dave. I just had no other teeth tonight. So you're the guy. No, um, it's uh, so the MACC uh, who actually started out working for. So MACC always suggests that you pay for it yourself and then I reimburse you because the process from town is very tough to you know, get that check to them quickly. So if you're going to go to the conference or take on something or even do, um, they have online trading too if you're interested. So we can pay, but there might be a point if it becomes, you know, like a lot, that we're going to have to say, well, you know, not, not now. Um, but yeah, just pay for it and I'll reimburse you. You forget. I, I need the receipt though. You forget I was over 40 as a teacher. Reimbursement took like six months <laughs> yeah. as a teacher. So <laughs> you can wait. Yeah, yeah. I know how, you know how to how wait. That works. You'll get Which one are you interested in? Just uh, uh, vegetative uh, identification. Yep. No, okay. Another, another, another person feature. besides these two. <laughs> where are they? Say where like we don't know what we're talking about. They get chip switch. Who's, who's teaching it? I'm, not say, I'm saying a lot. I don't question. know. Peter Fletcher. Well, you had a lot of questions today. Peter. It's our turn. Peter <laughs> Fletcher. Peter Fletcher? Can you be No. Can't okay. be. Yeah. Come on. He's a soil guy. All right, then. Uh, Sorry, no, that was, yeah, it's not him. Trying to, trying he doesn't to trust our administrator. And, and he also doesn't do regs. Hey, he'll be the first one to tell you about that. Who else would it be? I don't know. Whatever. It's okay. Rockwood. That guy, John Rockwood. I, I would be interested. I'll send you the yeah. thing. Wreck it, Bill. So, there's nothing else. Can Anything I make else? a motion to adjourn? Turn I'll second. second. All those in favor? Adjourn. I'll adjourn. Check out the clock. I'm, I looked at it.